I work at Airbus and I'm uh, the head of software engineering. Um, so basically my job is to enable developers uh, to build better software. And James, if you can present yourself. Yes, certainly. So my name's um, well, James Granger. I've been okay. working well, at Airbus. James, uh, James is, uh, is uh, the lead architect of, of, uh, of the API team. And today we are going to uh, talk about governance. If you can move on to the next slide, please. Hi, uh, Nisa, uh, is it so that you can't hear James? Oh, maybe I'm, okay. Yeah, I can. I can hear James. I just muted him actually. Just found that out. Anyways, can uh, you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you can hear yep. Okay. okay. Cool. Okay. So um, it's three p.m. We've had some uh, some little issues here and there, uh, connection-wise. And uh, when we when we gave it some thought about what talk you wanted to give uh, this year at API Days, um, well. Different options came to mind. Like uh, we did, we did a talk last year and even the year before. Uh, like m most of the talks were around strategy and stuff like that. And what we were thinking this this time with James was, you know, what's the most boring subject one can choose for a talk, especially at 3 p.m. afternoon and at a distance like this one. Well, answer is quite simple. You got it. It's governance. <laughs> so. Um, when we thought about it, we thought, okay, maybe we can take the governance subject and try to make it, you know, to give it to give it some justice, actually. Uh, and so that's that's what, what the whole the whole talk is all about. So, if you can move on to the next one. So, governance sounds like a boring subject, but for for all the bad reasons. Um, and um, if you if you if you uh, if you could switch, please. So. Governance is often seen as documentation. You know, uh, that's that's the way that it's uh, it's often seen. Lots of docs of telling telling developers how they should, you know, code code something, how they should name the versions, how should how they should, uh, you know, what guidelines they need to follow and stuff like that. So yeah, that's that's one aspect of governance that I I guess uh, scares people and isn't too attractive. But also one of the other aspects of, uh, of governance is the meetings, right? Because uh, often one, one thing that comes in mind when you think about governance is, oh, okay, so we're gonna have a governance board for this, a governance board for that. And then, you know, you spend your time in meetings talking about what's the next meeting, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how it's seen. And part of that is actually but what is it like? What's 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 behind the whole concept of governance, and why does it seem so boring? So governance um, is a set of tools and rules to make people more efficient at what they do by following the same principles. Like um, we all want to achieve the same goal. We all want to make APIs as products, obviously, and there are several ways to to to, to do that, and that's why like. Um, that's what governance is all about. Make, put, putting a bit of order in your house, so you can get to a stage where uh, things are, you know, a bit, a bit cleaner. I guess. Um, and in the context of API strategy and API journeys as a whole, uh, the governance dilemma comes in mind pretty quickly, actually. So the governance dilemma is the following: um, if you put too much order or too much rules or too much guidelines into your into your process, then you're going to hinder your uh, your speed. But if you don't put governance at all, then you're going to hinder your quality, right? So it's about fi finding the, the correct level of balance. Because if you start off your API API journey by only doing uh, very strong governance, okay, so you cannot commit an API if it doesn't follow this guideline, if the code doesn't have 10% of comments, like if um, if the naming is not correct, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, well, you're not going to have many projects. And on, and on the other side, if you start your API journey with no governance at all, then you're going to have uh, a really, you're going to find yourself in a really messy situation. And um, well, that, that these principles apply to pretty much any type of governance, be it APIs or, or something else. Uh, and so usually one, one typical solution that comes to mind is, okay, so you put in place documentation, you put in place meetings to make sure that people follow your guidelines. 
And that's how uh, typically like typical, typical governance is implemented. So the way we've seen it at Airbus is we chose to implement governance as code. And by the way, it's a lot of, lots of code. And uh, James is gonna tell you a bit, a bit more about it, but uh, how we solve those, those two big problems, less meetings, less talks, more concrete, and how we focus more on the developer. Okay, thanks, uh, Nizar. Um, just to, yep, thank you. Um, so, governance is uh, well is quite a broad and complex subject, and that would need most of the day to go through in detail. Um, so, we've sort of cherry picked a, a concept we think everyone can appreciate and, and relate to, um, and that is uh, version control and lifecycle uh, management of APIs. So um, this is actually really important, actually, because um, without it, you well, you basically have chaos. Um, your customers are going to hate you, and you're really going to end up very quickly in, in version hell. Um, and nobody wants that. Um, I think we can all agree. So the process of sort of managing that change can be, I use the word encouraged, um, sort of given the right tooling. Um, and uh, sort of here at Airbus, uh, we, we try to facilitate this through our sort of API development portal. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so change management, sort of, why does it, it, it matter? It's sort of, well, I think we can all agree that sort of change management is sort of underpins um, the whole sort of API lifecycle and, and governance um, aspects. And, and so it's an important process to, to get right as it affects how your API is used and perceived by developers and more importantly, because um, they're the ones who want to be able to use your, your awesome API to build those amazing products that they want to be able to sell. So um, versioning or change management helps developers keep track and, and maintain um, of different versions of APIs. It helps making deprecating those, a, those old APIs much easier. And also being able to track who is using sort of which version of API also facilitates communication of lifecycle changes to, to, um, to your, the users of your API themselves. So there's a couple of topics that I'd like to sort of go into and sort of tracking sort of API usage and the deployment of, of, of these sort of new versions. So if you consider sort of API as a product, which by now you should definitely be be doing, uh, you'll inevitably be, like any other product, sort of um, fixing it, uh, updating it, and improving it as, as time goes by. But however, it's sort of how this is implemented and communicated out that sort of make a change, well, sorry, make your change management a, a success or, or a failure. So as I just mentioned before, um, oh, sorry, go back to one slide, sorry. The previous slide. Okay, that's it. Um, so, so as I just mentioned, sort of tracking who is using your API is a big part of uh, sort of lifecycle management. So, typically, this might be carried out by well, some poor soul who's having to keep track of all the consumers that have requested access to a particular version in, in a monstrosity of a, an Excel spreadsheet. And, and you can imagine the fun that this person must must have on a, on a daily basis. Um, they're not going to be a happy bunny. So here at Airbus, we would rather that person enjoys their work. So luckily for them, consumer tracking is, is done by design in our development portal. And the, the screenshot you see here is sort of shows the sort of consumers of, of a particular API. So it's the dependency chain um, they're on. So as much at a glance, you can see who is using um, a, an API. Um, and that means it's easy to c communicate out uh, to those users um, if you're going to, for example, uh, be eating an API that they're currently using or, or um, you've got some breaking changes that are coming in in a new major version. So this sort of process is uh, is an example of how removing unnecessary documentation and including sort of governance as code in the lifecycle management process. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So tracking is just one small part, but you also want to be able to deploy um, the new version of the API. And that means more endless documentation meetings, doesn't it? Well, no, it doesn't. So you're wrong. So but with, with our document, uh, sorry, with our development portal, that process is built in and super easy to use. So it's just a couple of clicks and you can deploy your new, next new shiny API um, into either your test environment for the test team to rip to shreds or you know, promote it into the production environment. 
And the interface we've, we've come up with is nice and easy to use. Uh, it encourages the user to respect version naming uh, rules, as well as which environments to, uh, to deploy into. And the API it can also easily be undeployed as well. Or a new cool feature that we've introduced as well is being able to expire a particular version of an API um, that's not, not in a non-production environment, obviously. Um, just makes the, the whole sort of lifecycle management much more easier. So basically, the lesson here is good tooling means that API producers can easily respect those sort of governance guidelines because we've built them as code already um, into um, our development portal for um, sort of ease of use and making your, your sort of day-to-day -day tasks much easier. So next slide, please. So opening up the digital economy should definitely not be um, bogged down by sort of endless meetings and constantly out of date documentation, because that kind of defeats the whole objective of going digital in the first place. However, sort of setting up the right level of governance is important for an enterprise such as uh, Airbus to fully embrace the digital economy. And as a business, Airbus not only obviously manufacture amazing aircraft, we also generate a huge amount of data. And that data itself is the lifeblood of the digital economy within Airbus. So the greater the access to that data, the stronger the economy. And APIs, of course, are key to exposing and controlling access to that data. However, without proper governance, the exposition of that data is badly managed. The quality can be suspect, duplication occurs, use cases are too bespoke, all those sort of things that we, that we typically see. And this can cause uh, an unstable economy, if you like. So by putting in the sort of uh, tools and process that sort of help automate a lot of the work for you and help avoid unnecessary meetings and the like, you'll end up with a greater quality of API, better discovery, lifecycle management, and fully embracing the concept of an API as a product. Because doing this enables a healthy digital economy and allows the business to really take off and fly. And at Airbus, we make it fly. Uh, next slide, please. So, I'd just like to spend a little bit of a couple of minutes just talking about the, the sort of core principles of API governance uh, at Airbus that we've sort of been working on in, over the last uh, 12 months. And basically, we've been trying to work on defining the principles that sort of um, underpin a sort of solid foundation for APIs developed across uh, the whole of Airbus itself. And that goal is to promote discoverability, quality, and enabling the reuse of APIs that are published on our portal. And of course, this is not of any benefit to internal customers, but um, eventually to external partners and, and customers um, as we um, uh, mature along our digital journey. So we're focusing here on sort of three main areas of API as a product, API economy, and API and integration management. So API as a product, what's it about? Well, primarily it's about exposing sort of business services and resources uh, using APIs. And these are managed as actual products that sort of continue to evolve over time to meet, uh, meet our customer needs, rather than sort of um, developing sort of bespoke projects that tend to evolve into either monolithic type applications or just a simply too narrow focus on a particular use case that they're not reusable. So like a product, we want to be able to sell it over and over again in order to maximize our sort of the return on investment that we've put into this, um, this API and the resources behind it. After all, you can't resell a bespoke product that has been tailor-made for one use only. It's not good design, nor is it rarely cost-effective, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So the API economy sort of area, that's all about sort of maximizing the API as a product itself, how it can bring a value um, to the enterprise by realizing its sort of business potential. Um, and as such, sort of key concept of that is promotion of API. So it's like marketing, like you do for any other product, uh, as marketing and advertising. Um, and you, you want to be able to sell or sort of make available um, sort of data and resources to, to various consumers. And we can sort of facilitate that through our, obviously the, our, our API development portal. Um, so, and the benefit of, of having that sort of central hub, if you like, is the rapid discovery and use of exploitation across Airbus and its external partners. So we can enable sort of cost savings through reuse, reduce time to market, accelerate innovation and break down silos that are all too apparent in a large organization, and sort of enable eventually sort of consumption-based um, cost models for data and services and start to monetize those APIs. Um, 
and then finally sort of API and integration management. So this is all about providing, um, well, as a team, the part of the API enablement um, team that I, I, I'm, I'm um, a member of, sort of we're here essentially to sort of raise awareness and provide the processes and technologies and the skills to enable the creation of robust API products. So being able to improve the quality, lower the cost and sort of industrialize the whole process, putting that, those sort of um, that code in place, if you like, to automate the governance um, 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 uh, in initiative. So, and finally, sort of last um, uh, slide, please. Oh, next slide, please. Um, one of the um, things we've also been trying to put in place as well is to sort of improve the experience of um, the API producer and consumer project teams uh, here at Airbus as well. Um, and and um, we thought the best way of doing that was um, uh, create a catalogue uh, of all the different sort of API architectural patterns that have been implemented so far. Um, and so the aim of that is to be able to bootstrap the, the design and architecture steps of future project teams who want to produce an API and be able to call upon an existing pattern in order to understand you know, what is involved, uh, what the main components and building blocks are that make up this sort of common architecture. And sort of this way, project teams don't need needlessly have to reinvent the wheel because essentially sort of why spend time in meetings designing a pattern where you can always already pick a proven one up um, that is already well documented uh, and available for, for your use and pleasure. Um, and sort of one other thing I suppose as well is uh, in order to sort of keep, because sort of governance is a bit of a dry subject obviously, but we want to be able to try and keep people engaged in the process so uh, one of the things we also try and do is hold regular workshops and training to pr help promote the idea of api and the eco and the sort of ecosystem that it surrounds them so these are typically informal and interactive events so we can show that uh, governance can can be fun um and uh, i think um i think that's it uh nizar i think um, i'll leave it for you to sort of wrap up on the final slide yeah sure thanks james <clears throat> well, I guess um, um, two questions come in mind uh, came in mind when we when we uh, you know thought about the problem in the first place. Like, why should you do it in the first place? Why should you do governance? Uh, well, for one, if if your uh, if your API program is is quite big, which which is the case here in Airbus, um, you're going to get a cleaner and leaner catalog. So the catalog is going to look uh, you know much more coherent. Um, Marketing and and uh, aspect a uh, product aspect of APIs will be much, uh, you know, much more compelling to to the end user. It's going to be uh, much easier to catch the customer needs, obviously. And um, for the developers, it's it's going to be uh, better to build quality APIs in in a quicker time span, especially if you have like all the all the patterns uh, defined, etc. And um, and yeah, so that's like a, what what you what you get out of it, and uh, I guess one of the ideas here uh, when we did this governance as code aspect is each time you do uh, you think about a governance rule you want to implement in your organization, think about yourself as a developer. Developers they don't like too much constraint, obviously, but they also like to have some help. So each time you're able to implement that governance rule within some piece of code that's time that you're winning for your for yourself and that's a happy developer at the end of the day i guess perfect thanks guys that was a very interesting discussion there so we're a little